Hello everyone, it's Chelsea from Paper Octeo Studio, and today I'm sharing with you days 17, 18, and 19 of the ATC A Day 2017 Challenge. This is a challenge to make an artist trading card each day in June 2017, and I've been keeping up with it. I've made one every single day, and I'm just kind of clumping together my, my uh, video clips so that I don't have I don't have a video every day just a card every day so if you use that hashtag you can see hundreds and hundreds of ATCs out there made by people from all around the world who are following the challenge and using the hashtag in social media so you just type that in anywhere you know even in Google search and you'll come up with stuff so lots of fun on day 17 I decided to do a collage with some different papers I had laying around from Happy Mail. Some of these are Japanese origami papers. The one in the background is a handmade paper that has batik on it so it's very waxy and so that's the reason that I decided to use the heavy matte gel. Well it's not the heavy gel it's the regular gel from Liquitex and um, instead of a fluid matte medium to attach all these is because I have all these strange weights of paper but you will notice that when I used the gel format glue to glue down the napkin and then I tried to go over it I ruined the napkin so then I had to go and put another napkin piece over the top <laughs> so um, it really does you know it really makes a difference what kind of matte medium you're using what what viscosity you're using depending on the paper so it's just a little something to remember when you're trying to do collage so then I trimmed down the piece so that it could fit on a black cardstock border because I thought that looked better um, the size of an artist trading card is the same as a baseball trading card or a Pokemon card it's three and a half inches by two and a half inches or nine centimeters by six and a half centimeters approximately and so they're just you know they're small and fun to make a lot of people have been asking me what do you use them for um, I put my information on the back and use them as business cards although I really haven't handed that many out so I have a lot of them but um, <laughs> that's my intent is to use them as business cards I went to CHA last this last time in Phoenix to help out and I didn't bring any business cards and several people asked me for business cards strangely I was just there working as a worker people wanted my business card and I didn't have any so I was kind of embarrassed so this time I will be sure to have a pocket if I go I don't know if I'm going or not but if I do I will be sure to have a pocket full of ATCs with my information on the back so that's a little idea another thing you can do is to put them in baseball card sleeves in a binder they fit perfectly um, and then you have a whole display of them to look through uh, especially if you swap them with other artists and then you have a lot of different artists artwork and it's fun to look at them it's inspiring so the next thing I did was to do a little stamping over my collage background with some archival ink and then this little piece is was sent to me from a viewer who lives in Australia this little kangaroo and Joey and it it was a die cut but it wasn't cut really close so I did have to go ahead and fussy cut around it so then I used a brush pen from my artist brush pen set from Pitt to um, well actually they're from Faber-Castell but they're called Pitt artist pens I'm not really sure why but I went around the edges to take away the white around the edges and that makes such a huge difference I know it's it's a fussy thing to do but it makes such a huge difference in something like this when you're placing a pretty thick piece of cut out something over the top of your collage not having those white edges standing out everywhere makes a huge difference so the next thing I did was to just kind of use a couple different neutral colors to intensify the shadows to add a little bit of extra color these th this cutout was very flat it was just a uh, kind of a brown ink printed over uh, tan paper and the two 
characters were blending together. So I made the Joey a little bit darker by using some kind of an ochre yellow. And then I used a tan color on the shadows on the mom just to give them a little bit of depth. And then I used my extra uh, small black pen to just kind of firm up some of the details in the area where those two pieces connected, where the two animals were overlapping. And then, what did I do next? Oh, then I added some uh, black Stabilo pencil around the bottom edges of the image so that it had a little bit of shadow to make it ha make the make it stand out from the background and to kind of push the background back and give a little bit more depth. And that helps also when you're sticking something on top of something else that it just doesn't look pasted on if you add a little bit of a shadow around it really helps. And then the final thing that I did was to add a little bit of highlight by using my white Posca pen, but I didn't want to put it on there directly. So I made a little puddle on my deli paper and applied it with a wet brush so that it would kind of blend in, but it does add, it does lighten up a couple areas of the little animals so that they're more dimensional. So this is a fun little collage card made with all stuff that people had sent me in Happy Mail. Different people, not all the same people. Um, I've been using these Tim Holtz chat stickers a lot on my ATCs because they are the perfect size and they have, you know, little sayings on them. So this is where I decided to um, add some shadow around my sticker, but then the wet Stabilo with the... Um, with the brush soaked into the sticker. The sticker is absorbent, so that didn't work so well, so I used a pen instead. So that's day 17. Day 18, I did. I was doing some uh, gel printing on a 5x7 gel plate, and this is just part of the printing that I did, but I used um, some, I was using some Dilutions paints, some of the newer colors, that dark one I think is called pomegranate and the other one is the funky fuchsia and then I'm using some stamps, some rubber stamps to um, make marks you know on the print so that's all I did that's literally all I did <laughs> but the interesting thing was that I did my little ATC print and then I decided to clean up a little bit of the paint that I had on there using the same method with some of the gold PBO iridescent paint and it turned out really pretty and these are just on a, on pieces of scrap that I had left from something that it's it's mixed media paper that was really pretty but there was still paint on there didn't clean it all off so I decided to go in with the uh, um, Titan Buff or Buff Titanium, whichever one it is from PBO, and do another cleanup print, and it was really pretty. So on my card, I ended up using all three of those prints. So that's why I'm showing the whole process here. And this print did take all the little bits and bobs off of the plate and still has patterns. It's really interesting. Interesting stuff, gel printing. I recommend it. So I decided to use my gelatos, which I hardly ever use, <laughs> on this card and, you know, just add a little bit of extra oomph to the prints. This is the gold metallic one, and I'm just blending with my finger. Gelatos are water-soluble pigment in kind of a, it's kind of like lipstick strangely it's it's soft you can blend it with your fingers you can blend it with water it's very blendable and it just you just have the colors and I'm, I don't know why I don't use it more often I'm not sure I just never get into the habit of using it so with the print that had the gold paint I punched out uh, that's probably like a two inch circle um, that I thought kind of looked like a moon and then I decided to do a butterfly. I was having a conversation with uh, 
I think it was in a comment on Facebook, maybe someone said that their mom collected frogs because I'd had that frog card. And then I said to myself, well, my mom, or I said to her and to myself, my mom really likes butterflies and collects butterflies. And my grandma, she collects cows. <laughs> so I decided, and then I said to her, I think I should make a butterfly ATC and a cow ATC. So I did. So this is the butterfly one. Um, I guess maybe it's probably more like a moth because butterflies probably don't fly around at night, but whatever. It's some sort of a flying thing. So I decided to use the Memento Black ink and bring in a little bit of black to the composition because I thought it needed the contrast. So I ran around the edges of the card with the ink pad and around the edges of the circle. And then I used this stamp that has numbers on it and put that in a couple places on the background. And then I'm using a black pen to kind of add a little bit of detail to the body of the butterfly and or moth, whichever it is, I'm not sure. <laughs> then I thought it needed a little bit of the gold to, to blend it. It was, it was flat looking in comparison to the gold paper. It's, it's hard to see the metallic -y, shimmery stuff on video and even in pictures, you really can't see it, but I can see it. So I needed to have some of that gold shimmery stuff on the, the butterfly as well, because it, it looked flat in comparison, not in a good contrasty way, but in a way that was bothering me. And then I went around the edges of the butterfly with a black brush pin, you know, to kind of give it the same idea that the card has black lines around it. The, the moon has black lines around it and the butterfly should have black lines around it in my opinion. <laughs> and then I thought maybe a little pattern, a little bit more pattern. So I used the gelatos right directly onto the butterfly and then I used a pattern stencil. This is from the Crafters Workshop and put the, the stencil over the top of the gelatos and then removed some through the stencil using a wet baby wipe. So that is how I added a little bit of pattern without really disturbing the print so much, but just giving it just a little bit more of something. And I did bring in a third color of pink. It's kind of a more of an orangey pink, a coral. Um, I'd used another pink and I ended up using two different pinks and a gold out of the gelatos. So then I put everything together using tacky glue and came back in with my black pen to draw antenna on the butterfly so that it could have feelers to, you know, fly around with. And then some black splatters with the golden high flow paint, very liquid, very pigmented paint from golden. And of course, a chat sticker. <laughs> If you're enjoying this video, please remember to give me a thumbs up and to leave me a comment so I know that you were here. Um, if you have subscribed, you might want to turn on those little notification, the notification bell, because you may not be getting notified of all my videos now because there's been a change in the algorithm. And of course, share if you want to. You can share on Pinterest or Facebook very easily. There seems to be buttons everywhere to do that these days. <laughs> I decided that the wings were too connected, so I trimmed them out a little bit after I'd already glued them on. Probably should have done that before I glued it on. And then I added some more black and it didn't come out quite as well as I wanted. But <laughs> anyway, that is day number 18 of the ATC a day challenge. Moonrise Jellyfly. Yeah, I'm coming up with names for them now. <laughs> I'm a little bit crazy. So for day 19, this is just a quick and dirty sketch. I said that I was going to make a cow. Um, my mom and I, when we were driving around, uh, we, we went to the big island of Hawaii this month. I've been doing a lot of traveling with my mom. She wants to go to a lot of places. And we were driving around Waimea on the Big Island and that's where there's a very large ranch and a lot of um, 
cattle and there's paniolos, you know, the cowboys, the Hawaiian cowboys. We were discussing that my grandpa and grandma did not raise Angus cattle. That's the ones that are all black. They didn't like Angus cattle, that they liked the Holsteins, which are the black and white ones. And that's probably why all of grandma's collection that she had were the black and white cows. They were everywhere in her house. So <laughs> I made sure to make a black and white cow, not an all black cow, because that would have just been wrong. I don't really know what the difference is, but apparently um, the cows give out different types of products based on what what um, kind of cow they are. Didn't know that, but we were discussing it at length while we were driving around in Hawaii. <laughs> so I started out um, using ink tense pencils, by the way, and the ink tense pencils are the ones that are like a watercolor pencil, except for once they are activated with water and have dried, then they're permanent. They become ink. Um, I didn't really need that property of the pencil. It's just that I don't think I have any other watercolor pencils and I wanted to make kind of a watercolor sketch. I could have done this by just using a brush and actual watercolor but I decided to use pencils because I'm I'm comfortable with the pencil in my hand and so I started out with like a yeah, tannish brownish grayish color to do my beginning sketch sketch and then I deepened it up with different colors of of different pencils you know a more darker almost black charcoal gray and I added some uh, pink and orange together to make kind of a flesh tone for the nose of the cow but the thing the thing that I struggle with with watercolor now and probably forever is that there isn't an opaque white because it's watercolor it's all translucent and so if you if there's an area in watercolor that you made too dark the only way to lighten it up with traditional watercolor is to add some water and then blot it off to try to pull the pigment off. Well, the thing about the ink tints pencils is that they are not a true watercolor in that once you've activated them with water, they're permanent. So I can't lift something away from the watercolor paper by adding water to it and then blotting. So I made the nose area too dark because I had changed the size of the sketch as I was I was adjusting the sketch that whole area became very dark so I had to get out some titanium white acrylic paint and use that in conjunction with the ink tense pencils in order to lighten up areas that I had sketched incorrectly and altered the sketch and then made them too dark so that's the reason that you saw me get out um, white paint and use it on a watercolor sketch wouldn't normally do that but since ink tense has the the usually useful property of being permanent once dry <laughs> so for those of you who might be a little bit frightened of cows um, I did draw in a uh, piece of barbed wire of the barbed wire fence that would be in front of her so that she couldn't get out not that she would she would just stand there and look at you with those big eyes like what but I know some people are scared of them, so because they are big, <laughs> big animals. So that's my little quick watercolor-ish, I guess now it became mixed media sketch of a cow for my grandma. That's for you, grandma. Miss you. So then, of course, I decided to stick a sticker on there and um, put some ink around the edges and to finish it off you know the whole thing so i hope you've enjoyed this and that's it for me thanks bye bye